Today, it's our privilege to see and participate in the ordination of John Spann into the office of commissioned pastor. And it's a, it is a great day for us and for the Church of Jesus Christ. We rejoice in Christ's special care and love for his church because we have come to this day when we can see the ordination of John as a commissioned pastor. Because he has accepted the call of this congregation to serve in theological education at Mokanyo Theological College in South Africa, we shall now proceed with his ordination. From its beginning, the entire New Testament church has been called to proclaim the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. It is written, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Therefore, the church, under the guidance of the apostles, instituted distinct ministries to ensure that the work would be done well. Those engaged in these ministries were to function with Christ's power and authority, a power and authority rooted in obedience to his word and expressed in loving service. These ministries are therefore to be distinguished from the more general ones given by Christ to all believers. The office of commissioned pastor is one of these distinct ministries. A commissioned pastor is called not only to serve those who are already members of the Church of Christ, but also to engage in and promote the work of evangelism. As a true disciple of our Master, the commissioned pastor should show that the Church exists also for the world, and that the missionary task of the Church forms an essential part of his calling. Uh, John, uh, we'd like to give you a, a minute or two just to tell us about the ministry that God has given to you. Well, thank you for this opportunity. First of all, we want to say that it was a short 20 years ago that Bethel commissioned us and sent us out to Guinea, West Africa. Little did we know that we'd be exploring a little bit more of Africa then we had uh, a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a 15-month-old in tow, and uh, Bethel has supported us since, but now we're just, it's just Ann and I going to Mukanyo Theological College. Mukanyo is a school that reaches out in many ways, whether that's by residential training, whether that's by distance training, uh, to touch the lives of Southern Africa. In the residence, there were students from Sudan, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. And we had, what we saw was an amazing confluence of our experiences of living in different regions in Africa coming to bear because we could speak some Arabic with the Sudanese. The students who had suffered traumas in other areas of Africa understood when we told them that we too had been evacuated out of Guinea. And so I think we brought more than just academic knowledge to the table, even though Anne chased after the students to make sure that their ESL training was good and that they did English in proper ways. And I brought theological training, uh, but we also brought mentoring, uh, teaching them from example, teaching them life. And that's what we would hope to do there. Because we really want to multiply ourselves, just as the Great Commission said, go and mul essentially multiply yourselves to follow Christ. One uh, small story. One of the fellows there, his name was Jack. Jack was an orphan. Wrote English very poorly, but had a passion for the gospel. And I was teaching him from the book of Jude, how to defend the faith. One Monday, Jack came to me, Dr. John, I taught the people at the church from the book of Jude, just the way you told us how to take the, the text and say, what is this text saying? What is the next one saying? How do they fit together? And he was so excited. And Jack today is continuing to reach out to his orbit in South Africa. 
And that's what we hope to do when we go there, to actually multiply ourselves exponentially. Just one more short story. One other student named Paul is from Uganda. He wants to be a lawyer in Uganda, but he wants a solid theological base in order to be a good lawyer. I think this is just wonderful, and it also ties into the vision of global scholars to affect people academically that they might affect the nations. And that's our hope and prayer. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, John, for sharing that with us. John is going to be going to South Africa under the auspices of Global Scholars Canada, uh, a ministry, missionary organization, and Dr. Peter Sherman is the executive director. And, uh, and Dr. Sherman, if you would tell us about Global Scholars Canada and your relationship with, uh, with John. Sure, thanks for having me. Um, Global Scholars has been around for 25 years. And for 25 years, uh, we've been sending, equipping, and um, helping Christian professors uh, find their vocation, develop their vocation in cross-cultural, cross-boundary um, research, teaching, and community work. And we like to say, you know, you teach, or you uh, give a man a fish, and he'll eat for a day, teach a man to fish, and you can feed his family for a lifetime. Well, there's another proverb to add to that. If you can teach people how to teach people how to fish, you can feed a whole village for generations. And this is what we believe about education. It's not the West going to the rest as charity. It's us giving what resources we have to help indigenous leaders develop. And that's what John's doing. He's going to South Africa and he's going to help develop leaders in South Africa so that they can tend to the needs of the post-apartheid Africa. And we do this all around the world. We're uh, connected with the Society of Christian Scholars, which is a, a worldwide society of over 400 Christian professors trying to equip each other and develop this growing network of people who are thinking strategically, not just about development, but about mission and how to spread the gospel, and to integrate faith with all the disciplines from, what do we say, art to zoology. So he's in theology, but we do all the disciplines, and we like to focus on underserviced institutions around the world, and specifically, often, public institutions. So communist, Muslim, secular, that's where we like to place our uh, professors. Now, John is in a seminary. We work with seminaries as well because we want to develop Christian leaders in the world indigenously for the sake of uh, being salt and light and expanding God's kingdom. So that's, that's a little bit about uh, Global Scholars. Great. Well, thank you. And it's uh, nice to know that you've got a great organization backing you up, as in uh, yeah. Global Scholars Canada. And it's as you're officially, you know, uh, guarding his doctrine and life, but we're taking care of his employment, and we're going to be uh, checking in with John regularly and with his employer and be receiving reports. So we're kind of partners together uh, with Bethel in this ministry. Well, that's good. Thank you, and that's why it's so lovely that you're here, Dr. Sherman. Now, John, I have some questions for you. Not me. The church does not it's the church the lord does sure. john in order that all of god's people that are gathered all over the place by the internet that they may witness that you in the strength of the lord accept the responsibilities of this office you are asked to answer the following questions First, do you believe that in the call of this congregation, God himself is calling you to this holy ministry? Do you believe that the Old and New Testaments are the word of God, the only infallible rule of faith and life? Do you subscribe to the doctrinal standards of this church, rejecting all teaching that contradicts them? 
And do you promise to be a faithful servant, to conduct yourself in a manner worthy of your calling, and to submit to the government and discipline of the church? And John, what is your answer? I do. God helping me. Thank you. Anne, uh, Anne is John's wife. John, would you join us on the platform, please, and stand beside John? And uh, we have some of our uh, elders here. If you elders would come so that you can participate in the blessing of John. And as we bless him, elders and Peter, let's all extend our hands of blessing to John. John. May God, who has called you to this great and glorious office, enlighten, strengthen, and govern you by the word and spirit, so that you may serve faithfully and fruitfully in your ministry, to the glory of God's name and of the kingdom of God his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And to the people of God that are listening, I call on you to welcome John as a commissioned pastor of the church. I call on you to support him in the task of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, Christ in South Africa. And I call on you to pray for John and Anne to encourage them in the exercise of this ministry. All right, and I'm going to give a charge to John and Anne, in a way. Dear friend and fellow servant of Christ, we rejoice with you on this day that after much preparation, and that preparation still continues, you have been ordained as a commissioned pastor. May you experience much joy in fulfilling your calling. As you exercise the authority of the office entrusted to you, May you always remain a humble servant and servants. Use all your talents to the utmost of your ability and do not neglect any of your gifts. And one day our chief shepherd will give you the crown of glory saying, well done, good and faithful servant. This is a day to congratulate the whole church. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. May all of us keep the vows that we make. People of God, receive John as a gift of God. Give to him all the respect that is due his office. Encourage him when you hear he needs encouragement and pray for him frequently. And now let us return to the Lord and ask him to help us to do what all of us have promised. Let us all join together in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for that on this day you have given many blessings. Thank you for your church and for giving your church the task of calling others to proclaim the gospel and to build the fellowship of the covenant community. We thank you today in particular for the office of commission pastor and for John, that, that he has responded to the call and is ready to go. We pray that you bless him as a servant of Christ and of the church. Strengthen him and Anne. Strengthen all of us in the work that we are all called to do, that we all might be salt and light in the world. Help us to endure the heat of the day and the darkness of the night, sustained by your healing and guiding presence. Together, may we rejoice in the calling you give us as we serve in your name. All of this we ask with thankful hearts in the name of your dear Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen.